This is a presentation about how to use iMovie. And so iMovie is an app that is purple with a star and a camera on it. And it's built right into your iPad. And when you click and go into iMovie, you'll see any movies that you potentially have already created. Um, and you'll start with pushing the plus button to start a new movie. Right away when you click on this, you have two different options. For this video, we'll be talking about movie um, and showing you how it would actually work to make a movie. Um, so the first step is to click movie, and this will pop you into um, any images, and you can see pictures of my dogs. Um, but essentially, it's going to have access to anything in your camera roll. So, um, you actually can do something called app smashing. So like if you've made a video already using something like the app clips that we'll talk that you can watch a different video about or explain everything, you can have those videos that you can put in here. Um, you also have access to any other um, you know videos that you take or pictures that you have um, and things like that. And so the first step is to click create movie to create your movie space. And right now you can see that mine's blank and I could either record from the camera to put something directly into it or I can go to my photos, which is what we just saw, um, and we have a couple different um, options. So if I go to all and I'm going to just select this picture from of my dog, I'm going to click download button and then click the plus button and it will pop it in. So if you, and notice that when I pop in this um, picture of my dog, it actually moves a little bit. And this is called the Ken Burns effect. Now, sometimes people like to have that. Um, you also can touch on the image by clicking it here and rearrange how the image is. When you do that, notice how it scans a little bit different now as it goes. I personally am not a big fan of the moving of pictures. I like to actually disable that. So do you see how um, where it says pinch position to the end and then it says Ken Burns enabled. I'm going to click where it says Ken Burns enabled and um, it's disabled. Now look at the pictures kind of like still zoomed in on this. So I'm going to actually, I could have a couple options. I can touch the picture and move it down so that I can see Ginger, my dog's face, close up. I can also pinch out and a little bit and see if I can, if that makes anything better. The problem, as you'll notice, is that this image is more horizontal than vertical. So horizontal means it's wide and not very tall, but the image that I took and wanted to use was um, vertical. And so that's why this image um, is a little bit hard to fit into this um, spot. I'm going to find a different picture of my dogs. This looks like this is a horizontal one, so I'm going to hit download, and then I'm going to hit the plus. Notice that because my cursor is over here, it put this picture in front of the other picture. And these are my two dogs, Ginger and Scout. Scout has an allergy problem right now, so that's why she has the cone on her head. For this one too, I'm going to click Disabled of Ken Burns, and I'm going to actually zoom out. And notice how I can kind of pick, fix my picture a little bit. Notice that some of my picture does not fully fit on this screen. So when you are taking pictures, if you're going to use pictures for your iMovie, you want to make sure that you're picking pictures um, that are a little bit wider. So like instead of standing super close to the image that you want, you want to stand back just a little bit. Um, and so that's kind of how that works. Now let's just say I'm going to take this picture of these students working. This will be my last picture. Notice how I put the cursor to the end behind Ginger, and then when I hit the plus, they're going to pop in over here. So again, and for these two, I didn't have the Ken Burns effect. This one, I'm going to leave the Ken Burns effect because I think it looks kind of nice. So that's your one option um, for putting in photos. You also can go and look for um, anything that is... Um, I was trying to see there should be movies as well. You might actually have to just look for movies um, and try to find a movie within it if you wanted a movie. So I don't know that I have any movies on my camera roll right now, um, so I'll just stick one more picture in to just show you that process one more time. It downloads, you get the plus. You also have three dots, which <clears throat> is a new feature. So if I wanted to... Um, added as a green blue screen that would be as a background a split screen would um, make it a split screen um, which basically if I click on that move to the playhead over to add the overlay um, 
so if I put it like here and then I do picture in picture it pops it up over it so then you can have like this kind of cool feature like that so what I all I did is I put the the head this white line where I wanted the picture in picture to pop in I also I'm gonna put the head a little bit further let's say I take that same picture and I go to the three dots I also could do a cutaway and watch what that does now that it cuts away to that and then it brings me back to that so the difference was and if I don't want that one there I can delete this um, or I can change it but so what it did is if you watch how I pull this this was on top of it and then this one is the picture in picture so there are some kind of cool features that you can do and again I got to this um, by clicking on the plus button um, I also can drag and reposition this so when I touch this if I didn't like it over here and I wanted it over here so that it's there for some reason I could do that as well um, and then now when I watch it it goes like this and then the picture in picture is there so really all I've shown you so far is that you can add um, these uh, pictures to your iMovie you also could add in video either live videos or video that you have um, from your camera roll. I would recommend that you use video from your camera roll because it'll be a little bit easier um, to add to it. So that's kind of the process of adding pictures and they did add those couple features that are kind of cool. Um, again, when you click on here, if you just wanted to have the picture of the, the leaves, I could just do a plus button like this. But if I hit the three dots, again, you could do the split screen picture in picture and things like that. Um, so, um, that's just an idea as well. Uh, so those are some things to play around with as you edit your movie. So once you drop everything down, again, notice how I went in order. I would recommend that you put all of your content first, your videos or your pictures before you ever record any audio. Um, the other thing you can add right away is these are what are called transitions. So right now it's just the dissolve is the default. But you could do a theme, you can do a slide. So when I do that, watch how that changes. It slides this picture in from that picture so you can test what it looks like. When you touch on this too, you can decide how um, long the transition happens. So maybe I want to make it two seconds. That means it's a slower transition. Also, notice how long the dog pictures are. Typically a picture is about five seconds. Um, but you can take your finger, oh, and I'm, I'm apparently moving this one. You can move them around like this, but you also can drag it and make it longer. I'm just, my finger's just on the yellow thicker line, or I can make it shorter um, for the length that you want for the movie. Um, another thing that you can add to this is you can add titles. In order to add titles, you need to have picture or the video that you're working on clicked with the yellow line around it. When you add titles, Obviously it's at none. You can choose a variety of these and see how they pop up. Text here, and they show you what the different ones look like. Um, sometimes you have an option of center or lower, like here's center, so that's right in the middle of your screen, and then lower is off to the side. Um, those are just kind of nice um, ways to kind of play around with it, but again, you get whatever you like, and you click on it, and then, like this is my dog Ginger, so I'm gonna just title it Ginger. And then this one does give me the lower option, so I'm going to put it in the lower. Um, I can't move it anywhere, but I could like edit it. But So that's where it shows up. And unfortunately with iMovie, for some reason you can't change um, the color of the words. So the words are always white, basically. Um, you could also play around with filters. Um, so if you, didn't, if you want to make it look like different because of the story you're telling, you could change it to something else. Um, none just puts it back to what it was. Um, so that's just filters and again the reason I can do all this is because that picture or whatever the clip is is selected if I go to actions I can also duplicate if I wanted to so let's say I wanted this much of the clip saying ginger but then this I didn't want it to say ginger I could um, you know delete the words from this one and you know click on it delete text um, and then click none because I don't want images here so then I have it saying ginger here and then none there then what I could do is in addition to doing that with clips maybe at this one I wanted to do a side by side because maybe I'm talking about how I took my dog for a walk which I did and this is when we saw these pretty trees so I would touch um, I would select this 
I'd go up here, I'd go to my three arrows, and maybe I would do split screen. And now, when I do this, this is my dog, Ginger. We were walking and we looked at trees. So you see how I can make some cool split clips? Notice though that the split clip continued into this next picture for a bit. If I don't want that, I can actually click and drag this to change and stop literally where um, the picture changes. So that's just kind of a cool feature as well um, that iMovie allows you to do. The next step is once you kind of have your story set up, you want to start working on audio. Now audio, you can either record it all at once or what I recommend students to do is kind of record bits and pieces based on what you're talking about. Um, the one thing that I will give you as a big tip is you have to put the cursor, this big white line, at the beginning of whatever it is you want to record. So I have it at the white line, and then when I hit the microphone, which is right below Ginger's picture to the left, there's a microphone and a camera. When I click on the microphone, this shows me that it's ready to record. You can see how the green is moving, which means it can hear me. When I hit record, watch what happens. It counts down, and then it'll start recording and it will record until you decide you're done. And you might decide that you needed to talk about Ginger for this long, so then you hit pause. Um, and then you hit stop, and now I have recording one. Now you can review, you can cancel the recording, you can retake it, you can review or you can accept. If you review it, it allows you to see it first before it like puts it onto your screen. If you accept it, it means that's the one that you're going to go with. Um, and now if I'm going to hit accept, it now makes it a permanent thing. This means that this records over this whole time. So let's just say that this recording, I actually need this picture to be longer. So I'm just going to move it to this and I'm going to drag this until I see the end and then go over just a little bit. A, a good tip I would give you too is always, um, expand your, um, your picture a little bit, um, beyond... Um, what you're talking about. Sometimes too when you do recordings it kind of always it basically attaches this recording to wherever the picture was it started. Um, so you'll notice well, here if I play this song so then you, hit, so you can hear me talking um, uh, and then you hit and then you hit and so that was just showing you how as soon as that went off if you have to edit something you can touch and edit this as well. Um, but again, the biggest um, piece of advice I would give you for using iMovie is to always start the recordings at the beginning of the image. Um, and again, now if I wanted to start this image, and let's say I'm going to start talking about the trees, I would hit the record button, and then I would hit record. Now notice it does a countdown, and as soon as it gets to that spot, it starts to record. So wherever you want that recording to start, and I always tell students, I'm going to hit stop again, I always tell students that to pause for a second before, when, when you watch the line and you see it hit where the white line is that you want to start talking, wait just a teeny little bit of time and then start talking. Um, and again, you're going to probably need to expand, if I accept the, the video recording, you're going to need to expand this as long as you want it to be, but again, that recording is attached to that picture. Um, you also could, of course, put um, videos in here. I just chose to use images and again you can either have the images where they stay still or they move. It's up to you. Um, but, but my biggest recommendation for taking pictures is I know a lot of times we want to take up and down pictures which means that they are tall and narrow so they're not very wide but I want you to work on taking and those are called vertical pictures. I want you to work on taking horizontal pictures um, when you do your post only because the horizontal pictures are wide and they fit this movie screen. And think about how your TV, the shape of your TV at home or a movie screen when you go see a movie, those are all wider screens. Um, this button next to the um, camera roll actually allows me um, uh, to open up and have video. So this is actually Mrs. Reed's office, so let's just pretend I was going to record um, what I have on my bulletin board. I would hit record, there's my schedule, and I could retake this video, watch it, see if I like it. If I like it, I click use video, and then that video will come in. So this is great if you have a live demo. Again, you could do the same thing by being in the camera and having a video there. Either works. And again, if you made a mistake and you need to edit something, um, you can always... Um, move stuff around. Um, the other thing, notice too, you can detach the audio. So maybe if you wanted
wanted this is me talking if I didn't want that to show up I could click the delete button and delete the audio now it's muted so then if I had sound um, you wouldn't hear it so that's how I would add a video um, to my movie last thing I want to mention to you is audio so here is audio and you have a couple different things you do have um, sound effects you could try out um, you also have access to soundtracks um, and there's a lot of different soundtracks as you can see um, for to use and I'm just gonna pick one that I already had I'm gonna use springtime it'll download it and then I can hit the plus button and it automatically puts it onto my video um, one thing you'll notice when you click on this is you can click um, split you can duplicate it if you want it to be in the foreground um, you can make it do that and it'll start recording and if you want it to be quieter, you can play around with that. Uh, but if you want it to be in the background, background means it'll be quieter. So now I'll listen to this. And then it'll start and recording. It'll start recording. And, it will, and it will... That means it's adjusted so that it's not too loud. Foreground means that it's going to be very loud. So you'd always want it to be kind of in the background. The other thing you can do is, like, let's say you want to split the clip here. If you split the clip here, you could then delete whatever is highlighted in yellow. And what's neat about that is then if you wanted to add a new song, like the shapes of things, and maybe I want to put it where it starts right here, I can click on this and then pop that in here. Notice how it kind of starts where the other one starts. Um, so you could always split, and then if you want to delete that piece, it, it always kind of like sticks them together though, so there's always going to be music in the background. But again, and if maybe you want to change the music here, you could hit split, you can hit delete, and then you could pop down the springtime one again. And you could do that. And then remember over here, I didn't have any sound. So what I could do here is I could hit split. Then for this part of springtime, I put foreground because now it's like the main thing. So again, that's how you would add audio um, to your um, presentation. When you think you're done, you can hit done in the top left corner. It will process it and you can still go back in and work on it. So you see how it says my movie, it tells me the date, it tells me how long it is. Um, if I go back in and edit, I can go right back in like that. I just hit the edit button. I'm gonna hit done though for right now. If I want to rename it, I can just tap on this and I can do um, my dogs. So I can name it. Um, I can push the play button at the bottom. The trash button you do not want to hit unless you want to put it in the garbage. And then you have the export button, which when you click on that, it will actually allow you to put, export it. And I would recommend that you save the video. That will save it as a video in your camera roll. Um, you also can put it into Drive, put it into Canvas, um, and into Seesaw. So if I push the export project or if I push save video, it's going to save it. And I would always do it at the HD um, just because it'll be um, the best. Now for mine is saying I have low battery so I can't do that right now. But that is how you would